Saga Cigars, makers of the Saga Golden Age. The Golden Age is a cigar that takes you back to the classic days of cigar smoking. Through the six generations of experience by the Reyes family, the Saga Golden Age delivers a timeless blend that uses the nobility of the tobacco to bring you the perfect balance of power and flavor. It narrates better than words the history of a family's tradition in tobacco, delivering a cigar much like the ones they used to smoke in the times of Hemingway. Saga Golden Age is a full-bodied, full-flavored Dominican Puro. With tobaccos from one farm, the blend features a Corojo 2006 wrapper and filler from original Cuban seeds grown in the Dominican Republic. Available in four sizes at an affordable price, the Saga Golden Age is sure to please and take you back on a journey to yesteryear. M. Bombay cigars represent the most admired cigar culture of Cuba. They select the best of the best quality tobacco to use in the aging process. M. Bombay cigars are then rolled in Costa Rica by some of the most experienced cigar rollers, giving it a unique smoking experience. The band portrays the detailed and artistic nature of our small industry. Try the M. Bombay Casera, M. Bombay Mora, and the recently released M. Bombay Habano. M. Bombay Cigars where the cigar is a way of life. Partagas, since its introduction in 2014, Partagas 1845 Extra Fuerte has won critical acclaim and a devoted legion of fans. Flawless construction and full-bodied flavor are the hallmarks of this rich, dimensional cigar that features prevalent notes of wood and coffee. Made with a unique blend spanning three continents, Partagas 1845 Extra Fuerte is the perfect choice for any cigar smoking occasion. Cigar connoisseurs are already raving about this exquisite cigar, which pays homage to Christopher Columbus's discovery of tobacco during his expedition of the New World. This medium to full-bodied cigar shows off the kind of exquisite construction expected by master blender A.J. Fernandez. This gorgeous box press cigar features a delicious dark chocolate Nicaraguan wrapper that houses a blend of Ometepe, Condega, and Esteli filler, bound with a Jalapa binder. Once lit, the perfectly balanced and refined New World gives off a beautiful billow of smoke and hits you with spice and citrus flavors. As you begin to lose yourself in the rich aromas of the New World, flavors become more complex and begin to express hints of hazelnut and coffee. The New World is a first-time collaboration between A.J. Fernandez and his father Ishmael, making this cigar stand out in the A.J. Fernandez line. To commemorate the union of father and son, A.J. Fernandez is offering you this masterpiece at an MSRP of $6, unheard of for a cigar of this caliber. A.J. Fernandez invites you to embark on the journey and smoke what he guarantees to be one of the most talked about cigars of the year. The New World, Cigar Journal's number one cigar of the year. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. We're going to talk about our Stogies of the Week. Very yeah. excited. Yeah. Hey, Paul, real quick, um, just a couple of quick notes, uh, housekeeping. Um, Defiant Whiskey is actually having an open house tomorrow at the distillery in Golden Valley from 3 to 9.30. So you can actually, folks who are in uh, the area of North Carolina, check it out. They're going to have drinks. They're going to have food. Uh, and they're going to be selling whiskey and they're touring. So you'll get to see all that. And then don't forget about M. Bombay is having, uh, if you buy three M. Bombay cigars from your local retailer, you're entered into a raffle ticket for a trip to the, uh, the Big Smoke in Las Vegas. So nice. Yep. And then one other thing before we get in there, we had one question before we went on break. Name a cigar that we felt was what well, we name a cigar. And I'm, I'll just go real quick. I'm not going to go into a long explanation, but mine was going to be called Vienna, uh, kind of crossroads of life, crossroads of Europe. That was kind of my thought of a cigar. So what's the, what's the question? What would I name my, my cigar? What would, you, what would you name your cigar? I don't know necessarily what I'd name my cigar because I'm really bad at naming things. I know what I wouldn't name my cigar, and I would not name my cigar after myself because no one wants to smoke an Asadorian. Ha, ha. <laughs> that is a smoking hot ass. But there's a drink called the There's a drink called the smoking hot Asadorian, which right. is okay. Right. So That's you're not going to name this? <laughs> yeah, the, the cocktail was as far as I'm willing to take it. I might agree with this one. <laughs> yeah. So, Will, why don't you kick us off? Oh, I can't believe I can top that. Um, 
been smoking, kind of went back and smoked um, the Ahe. Uh, this was a, a release that talked about a couple of these, but I haven't talked about this one. It's the Senor Andre, Andres Chicharrones, um, and this is called the Chicharrones Bold, which is their Maduro. Um, you know, overall, I found that these Chicharrones, they had a uh, original, which was a Corojo, a Spicy, which was a Criollo, and now they have a Bold, which is a Maduro. I think they've all been pretty good. I think they've all been fivers, including this one. This is, I've liked Andre's Maduros a lot. Um, I'm not going to say this is the best Maduro he's ever done. It's not the worst one he's done either. Um, but it comes in that, um, that Rothschild size cigar, which is a four and a, four and a half by 48, which I do really like that cigar. Um, it, it's classic, um, a lot of classic what you'd expect from a Viaje Maduro, but a little more, it's bold in flavor, but it's not, a, it's not a nicotine skull and bones type of thing. You know, you're going to get those mochas and pepper notes, but again, it's not going to overpower you per se, but, um, overall, I think it was a pretty good cigar. Like I said, um, it's something that I would put as a fiver. Um, the price point is actually pretty good for Viaje as well. Um, you know, where you're coming in at seven ninety five. So cigar worth checking out if you're a Viaje fan, um, not worth breaking the bank where you're going to get a good fiver and fiver. I just want to point out when we recommend something as a fiver. We're telling you buy five of those cigars. So you want to smoke it? It's something you want to smoke. It's not a, you know, I've, I, I talked to someone about this this week. We're not. That is not a negative rating. We're telling someone to buy multiples of your cigars. Mm-hmm. I think it's a po- so look at that as a positive. Our rating system is is a little different uh, than a lot of other sites. It's a a three does not mean you got necessarily a bad yeah, score. Yeah, it's not a scale from right. zero right. to five. Right. Um. It, where it's like five is necessarily the best and in zero right. it's a, it like the the rating system is meant to be more of a recommendation rather than a rating right and fiverr is great and, and of course our ratings tend to fluctuate as well and they progress when we first smoke the cigar we may give it a fiver we may go back to it again and say well this is box worthy now so we definitely adjust our rating system uh, based on age, and we go back and we uh, redo a lot of cigars as well. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's key. And we smoke other sizes too. So sometimes, some, you know, that Avo was a great example how we, <laughs> yes. we we just came back to it and said, yeah, it's box worthy or or box split in in that bigger size. Um, <clears throat> I smoked an Esteban Carrera as well, and I want to say this is a newer offering from Esteban Carrera. Actually, it's not. Is it in the a, Connecticut though? This is a Connecticut. Two eleven. That's a two eleven. And this is in the Connecticut wrapper because I saw you reviewed it and you said it had a Sumatra wrapper. Um, the fifth they have one in a Suma, in a Sumatra called the fifty one fifty. Um, the two eleven is the Connecticut wrapper. Okay. Um, so this was a great dude. This is a great Connecticut. And, and it, it is. I, I yeah. I had never smoked Esteban Carreros Connecticut. Apparently, it's been out for a while. Um, they just got a box of these next door at the Havana Cigar Club, and this cigar retails next door before any kind of discounts at six dollars and fifty cents. Now, if you're a member, depending on which member you are, you can save five or ten percent off that price. If you hit this on a day where I think they run Esteban Carreras on the cigar of the day, you can take like an additional ten percent off that or something. There's some other kind of discount if it's the cigar of the day. Even at six dollars and fifty cents, will this stick is box worthy? This is a great Connecticut, nice flavors, very smooth, very creamy. I smoked two of them for this review, and I did I rate this box worthy? I think I you think put I a. Did. I saw a split on it. Is Was it it's the two eleven? Right? Yeah, the, the two eleven. Yeah, um, this is creeping up to box worthy in my opinion. The two that I smoked were very very good. Uh, it's a box split right now. Um, I can see this going to box worthy, Will. When it, these cigars reach their peak uh, in aging, uh, this is definitely a box worthy. I think the box split rating comes from, you know, there's a little bit of kind of like a, I don't want to say youngness, but there's kind of like a little bit of bite to this cigar. Um, but for the most part, the majority of the cigar is very smooth and very creamy. Um, and it's a very good cigar. I really like this Connecticut, Will. Yeah, that's a, you know it's, I think that cigar is about four years old actually. It's come out a while ago, um, and uh, the guy who turned me on to that cigar is Mark Boley from Defiant Whiskey when he was in the cigar business. That is one of his favorite cigars. Yeah, 
It's and he great. actually was the one who, who turned me on and sold me the, that cigar. And I kind of forgot about it. You know, it's in, been the tor- in the Toro size? Yeah, in the Toro size. Do they, they, do they make it in other sizes? Yeah, they do. I don't okay. have them at the top of my head, but they definitely do. The Toro and, size was good. The Toro size hit the mark. Yeah. Yeah, they have a Sumatra, which is the 5150. They have a Maduro, which is the 187. Mm-hmm. And then they have this Connecticut, it's the 211. They're, that's their police code uh, series. Okay. They, they named them. You talk about names. That, those are some pretty cool names, actually. That's pretty funny. They have a 187? Yeah, that's the Maduro. They're all, they're all you really. You know, I haven't gone to see the. Uh... Uh, NWA movie straight out of Compton. It I did, haven't either. It, it I was I I listened to NWA. I I grew up in that that time where they were defining the the music uh, rap industry at that time. So they yeah. talk a lot about the police codes in their songs. That's what. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, me think 50, I think fifty one fifty. I think Van Halen actually, which is you know, I think it's not a police code in that case. I think it's also an amp. Mm. And, and if anyone in the chat room could correct me on that, I'm I'm thinking that. So nice. Good cigar. Back to you, Will. Um, I went ahead. Uh, this was uh, and I smoked. I've been smoking the La Hacienda, uh, by Warp Cigars. Um, and I don't. This is one that's kind of I think floated under the radar from Warp Cigars. They released this one this year. Wait, um, now where's I, the Hacienda made? Uh, it's made in uh Casa Fernandez at Tabza. In it's a Nicaraguan cigar. It's it's a Nicaraguan puro made in Nicaragua. And it's a different blend from the Oso. The, or yeah, the, the Oso is a size. The Oso is a blend. Is, a, is the uh, blend. Okay. Yeah. So Oso and La Colmena are made at El Titan de Bronze. Okay. And Oso uh, is a Nicaraguan and La Colmena it has some Dominican in it? Um, Oso, uh, La Colmena has an Ecuadorian wrapper and okay. uh, Oso has an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. But Binder and Filler are Nicaraguan in both. They have ones. some in it. I think it's a mix in there, to be honest okay. with you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Inter- but it's is- a very interesting cigar line. Warp cigars make some really interesting cigars. Is what I yeah, say they do. Um, and this one, like I said, is a. It's you know, a lot of people are familiar with those Osos and those La Camenas, mm-hmm. which are the the ones made in the U.S., which are very good cigars. Um, the La Hacienda and the Florida Valley are made in Nicaragua. I think they're starting to get some traction right now. Um, I haven't smoked his ones made at Casa Fernandez. They're really good. Okay. They're, they're really good. I've been um, wanting to try them. Yeah. Um, this one I happened to pick up um, I, a couple of these, and I got to get some more of these. Um, this one's a little bolder for a warp cigar. Um, so this one's in that medium to full in terms of strength, and it's medium to full, almost full in body. Which, you know, Warped, I, when I kind of think of warp, they're more of those mediums. Uh, yeah, also you know, in La Colmena are, are both pretty pretty light. Even also is a little stronger, but it's still pretty medium body to my yeah, opinion. Yeah, I would say it's a medium to medium. But, but this one's, you know, one's kind of getting more on, on the fuller for what Casa Fernandez is known for. Mm. I smoked the Superioris, which is a, a Corona Gorda, 5 and 5 eighths by uh, 46. It's a really good cigar. Nice cedar notes in it. Is that, like that cedar and that nut come together with this cigar. Cigar that really, really makes it a, a, a good cigar. There's a lot of change-ups in there. Um, you know, I, surprisingly, I got a, the sweetness almost was like a, a little bit of a prune-type sweetness I got from it. Um, and then there was even a little bit of a grassy note in there. I thought it just, this cigar changed up a lot. Like I said, I like the fact it was a bolder cigar from Warped. Um, it's a good price point for a Warped. You know, so here's the thing. You know, you think of those La Colmenas and El Osos. They're more expensive because they're made in the U.S. Yeah, this they're is a little seven- pricey. Yeah, this is a 750 cigar. Um, nice. And I, you know, I box split this one. Um, great construction. You know, construction. We've talked sometimes. There's been some occasionally a construction issue. These were pretty solid. The the, the ones I smoked. So um, good cigar. Definitely uh, one to keep on the radar. If I can get some more of these before I come up, I'll I'll bring them up because uh, I'd be curious to get your thoughts on this one. Okay. Um, I smoked the La Jugada Habano Robusto. Uh, and we, this is from Moya Ruiz, and we yeah. interviewed those guys on the show. Yes, we did. Uh, La Jugada is a good cigar. I, I don't think it's quite suited for my palate, but I, I do want to say the burn draw and construction were, were impeccable on this cigar. Um, I felt, though, the, the flavor seemed a little bit unbalanced uh, for my palate. To use that old Stokey Santa adage, you know, the cigar didn't quite know what, to do with it, what it wanted to do with itself. 
Um, I think some age will kind of help this cigar and have the tobaccos meld together a little better. Um, by no means do I think this cigar is bad in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Uh, I just think it maybe could have benefited from a little age to get those tobaccos to meld together and be a little bit more balanced. I think age really helps uh, the balance of a cigar. And I think those flavors are really come together with a little bit of age. So I do plan to revisit this one. Yeah, um, I'll say this. I, this is one we may greatly disagree on. I had this very high when I had it. But I think mine benefited from um, a lot of age. Ah, you corroborated my story. Yeah. Now, <laughs> Cigar Dojo gave this his cigar of the year a couple years ago. I remember that. Yeah. And now I had it at the trade show two years ago when it came out. And I think my reaction to it was, yeah, it's got potential. I don't think I was rolled over by it. Um, and... Then I went back and revisited it, and I was very surprised where where it was. That's interesting because um, we've never talked to you and I've never talked about a review of this cigar together. No, so we haven't like this wasn't planned or anything. I mean, no, those, no, are, we, those are my honest notes that I wrote when I I actually smoked the cigar like a couple of weeks ago, um, and so uh, I, I I mean I don't want to like think I'm like an expert on picking no. out flavors in a cigar, but my assessment was I'm like. This is a good cigar that just needs a little bit of age and a little bit of time to like meld these flavors together. And what you're saying was you felt the same way when you first smoked this cigar. Yeah, I did smoke it at the trade show, yeah. but I kind you know again, it didn't stand out. I I could see there's a lot going on with that cigar. And I could sometimes I could see where you're saying it might not have. I could see it is what what right. I'm saying. I think some time is going to do that. And I forget when I picked that cigar up. I know I sent that to you, but I picked that up somewhere. Um, so I got to say, I know I have a few in that batch. I'll actually go revisit that. But there's a, I mean, like I said, it's, there's a lot of potential with that cigar. What, how strong was the cigar when you had it? Was it a power bomb? Or no, did it, it wasn't a powerhouse. I'd say it's medium. It wasn't light by any stretch. I would say it's, a, it, you know, but it wasn't strong. So I would put it squarely in that medium category, Well, Yeah, a lot of people said that was a, a power bomb, and I never never got that easy that's why i was okay. asking that okay back to you will um this was one of my smokes of the week and, and they're a sponsor but I'm, I'm gonna say and we've smoked this on the show i smoked the saga blend number seven perfecto oh, love that cigar dude let me let me tell you um you know again we're talking about um you know this perfecto it's a uh, seven dollars and 49 cents for well-made perfecto um that's a great price and, and yeah, you can't. I mean, honestly, and and I think this cigar it's got a Brazilian Cuba bi- uh, wrapper, a Dominican binder, and a mix of Central American and Dominican filler. Um, we've talked about this cigar. I know on the show, if you, there's a lot going on with this cigar, and that whatever they're doing with the Perfecto, it just makes this blend shine. It makes that blend come alive, dude. That's, it makes it yeah. come alive, and, and it's not a knock on the other sizes, which no. I. Are the very, other side's good too, yeah. Yeah, but it um it really has a lot going on there. Um I even there was a point where I was almost getting a hickory note out of this thing with with some of the you know it was just a real nice cigar. Um it didn't overpower me. It was um in strength, but it had a lot I'll say this, it that cigar has a lot of body, so it weighs on the palate. Um mm-hmm. so I thought it had a lot of body, um, but it's not a power, you know, it's not there's not it's not a nicotine bomb. The construction, I mean, I went through a few of these, and every one of them burned great. I was like, you know, and usually Perfectos, I tend to, they're never perfect. But this was, this was really good. Um, at $7.49 price, point, I could smoke these. This is a, you know, you, there's not a lot of everyday Perfectos you can smoke. This isn't, this isn't every, that's a great word to describe, phrase to describe it, Will. It's an everyday Perfecto, right? Everyday, I could smoke one every morning. Yeah, you can absolutely smoke one of these, and... You know, again, not break the bank for it um, and just really. And then I'll say the other thing I'll say is with that Brazilian uh, Kubra wrapper, I've had it's a hit or miss wrapper with me. I've, I, yeah. There's some blends I, I like. I like what PDR does with it. There are other blends I've had with it, which are which are subpar. This is definitely a very good one. So I think they they kind of nailed it with with this. Um, definitely check it out. Well, what are you smoking now? I'm still actually working. I actually was uh, working on the. Um, what did I say? Why am I drunk? I'm still smoking Azan. that Azan. You're smoking it on. Yeah, I kind of was going very slow. I had a headache earlier today, so I've been smoking slower. But, uh, yeah, I'm still smoking the Azan Maduro. 
So I lit up a Indian motorcycle ultra premium cigar. Um, I, I I'll review these now. I don't know. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, I'll talk about this one as one of the ones I, I put on the the blog uh, that's not published yet. Uh, Indian motorcycle ultra premium. This is the Toro Natural. Uh, this is the one I reviewed, uh, and it's the one that I'm smoking now. This cigar is really awesome. Uh, the Toro size is really, really good. Um, and I've smoked through quite a few of these Indian motorcycle cigars. comes in a Maduro. Um, it comes in a natural wrapper. And uh, much like the Debonair line, um, uh, different blend from the Debonair line, of course. And um, the Toro size is good. I'd rate the Toro size a box split, in my opinion, Will. Um, I think the Toro size is really good. Uh, now, these come, to my knowledge, in three sizes, Robusto, a Toro, and a Gordo. Uh, is the Gordo a 60 ring, Will? I got to look that up. I don't know if it's a 58 or a 60. I, I want to say it's a 58 because sometimes uh, I have to really look to tell the difference between a Toro and a Gordo. Yeah. Um, and I put I, them all in the same bag, which makes it even worse. Uh, I bought a bunch at the event. Now, yeah, uh, I think Go ahead, Paul. This, this cigar has a great mouthfeel. The smoke, the way that it coats your palate, I find is pretty unique in that it like coats your whole palate with this really thick, deep, rich smoke. And it does that in both the Maduro and the Natural as well. I tend to prefer the Natural over the Maduro, especially in the larger sizes. Robusto, we'll, we'll get there. But um, you know, the Toro and the Gordo... Um, the, the ones that I've smoked, it, you know, the mouthfeel is great. The burn drawn construction on these is unbelievable, dude. I F mean, F 58 and is also a Churchill. Okay. I don't yep. think I got any of the Churchill. I think I okay. just got the, to the Toro and the, in the Gordo. Okay. Um, I mean, the ash dude is like, it's such a thick, like well constructed ash. I can like pick it up from the ashtray. It's unbelievable the way these things burn. The construction is awesome on every single one that I've smoked. Um, I smoked the uh, the Gordo in the Maduro, which is very good as well. Um, I smoked the Robustos. Now, I had a Robusto Maduro. And it's interesting, the Maduro was a little lighter in strength than the Natural, which is kind of weird. Yeah. Um, but it's a Kaneka Broadleaf uh, Maduro. Uh, the Natural in the Robusto, Will, is my bell of the ball. That's the one I bought a box of. Okay. I've probably smoked five of those, dude, um, since the event last Saturday. So in like less than a week, I've smoked five of them. I just I can't stop smoking them, dude. They're addicting. The Robusto and the Natural Wrapper is the bell of the ball. And like I said, I smoked quite a few from the line in both Maduro and Natural. Um, the Toro's probably and the Natural is probably my second favorite uh, right now. This one is smoking particularly well. Uh, for me tonight as well. I, I think they benefit from a little time to rest in my humidor uh, since the event. Um, but the Robusto and the Natural, bell of the ball, it's box worthy. It's going to go to Chuck Norris uh, after it has some time to age. Um, I'd say the Robusto Natural is probably the strongest one strength wise of the bunch. Well, it's, it packs quite a punch, uh, actually. Um, and uh, you, wanna, you definitely want to eat before you smoke it. Uh, it's got a lot of strength to it, which gives it a lot of aging potential. Like I, like I said, it's going to very quickly go from Boxworthy to Chuck Norris to probably Oasis after you let this cigar wow. sit for a long time, Will. A that, tangy. I've smoked a, a lot of these Indian motorcycle ones um, since the event. I got quite a good sampler. Uh, like Jack was, Tarani was saying, I, I, you know, I did well at the event. Uh, you know, buy a box, you get five free, and then you, you buy five more, and you get another three free kind of thing. And... You know, of course, Stokey Santa and Phil and, and Paul Joy were loading me up uh, at the event because, I, you know, I bought a whole bunch of cigars. Um, so they hooked me up, and it was just um, – they're, they're all really great. But, again, my favorite so far, and I smoked through almost the entire line probably, uh, is the Robusto and the Natural. And, and to me, that's a cigar that has the potential to go to Oasis level for a very reasonable price too. These are not uh, expensive cigars. No, they. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I've not smoked them yet. I probably will be in the real news future, and I, I'm really curious. Uh, Stogie Santa, I'm not trying to put words in his mouth. He, he's been very much hinting about that natural. Yeah, he's been real, and and he loves the Maduro, but he's been kind of saying he's because he knows I'm a, 
you're a natural guy with the debonair line, and I'm a yeah. Maduro line, guy with the debonair line, but he was kind of saying, I think you're going to go for the natural, both of you guys, um, when they come out. So he, he kind of nailed it. He was right. Like, now, I tell you, know, you what, the Maduro and the Robusto is really good. Um, it, it, it's tough for me to find anything that I don't like about that cigar, to be honest with you. Um, it's a little bit of a milder profile to it, but the Connecticut Broadleaf does some wonders on that. So it's a, if you like Connecticut Broadleaf especially, you're going to love that cigar. Um, I, I kind of, I don't know, I just gravitate towards the natural dude because it's got so many different flavors in there that I just can't put my finger on, and it's so different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you put a Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper on the cigar, I think it's it's a little difficult to be kind of differentiated, you know, because the Connecticut Broadleaf has such a prominent flavor profile. But the natural wrapper he's using on these, uh, I don't I don't know what it, I should know what it is. I don't Ecuadorian. Know it, it, it's Ecuadorian. Ecuadorian. Oh, yeah. It, it, it the flavor profile is just so dynamic but balanced at the same time, and you just kind of like picking out flavors left and right. Um, and, and that's why I gravitate towards the natural. You know, I've really enjoyed, you know, we, Phil's been with us for really a long time, almost two years, and, and, and I've enjoyed watching this brand grow. And there is no doubt Phil Zengi is on the map right now. In, in this Indian motorcycle tour, I'm just seeing people go nuts over these cigars. Dude, I'm now, you, know, yeah. you know my luck with cigars and burn right. and drawing construction, right? And I've smoked a bunch of these Indian, because I bought a bunch at the, I bought a box and I bought the Gordo in the um, Maduro. I bought a Toro in the Natural. I think they gave me a couple of other ones to, to try as well. And I've smoked through all the different ones that I've had. And I haven't had any issues with burn draw construction. The amount of smoke that you get is great. And like I said, the, the mouthfeel and the way that the flavors kind of coat your palate in this Natural wrapper especially are just really unique um, and very special. So, a lot of people got theirs at, at Twin Smoke Shop. That was the uh, the national release, um, a U.S. release of the cigar. So, uh, look for it in more retailers coming soon. Uh, I know Phil did a whirlwind tour of New England to release this cigar. He started at Twins. He went to a, um, of course, Dave Garofalo's shop um, in Salem, New Hampshire. Uh, at Two Guys Smoke Shop. He was in New Jersey, <coughs> Connecticut. Did he go to New York too, Will? Um, I he might have. I don't I don't know if he did an event in New York though. Okay. And he, was he, did at, a, Rhode he was at Island. Ma- yep. Then he flew to Montana. Yeah, he was hunting moose or something like that. Yeah, he was doing a crazy it was like pictures of him in cowboy boots and in cowboy I, hats and stuff. Yeah, I mean he um <laughs> He was definitely, I mean, I thought maybe he was going to head east to the Black Hills, you know, go to Sturgis. I, I didn't know what was going on with that, but I thought he was on vacation, so I didn't want to buzz on him. Yeah, no, he did some events in, in Montana. It's actually some Stogies listeners uh, came in. Uh, and one of them was from really? Montana uh, the other day. Yeah. I hooked him up. Let me tell you, if you're ever in Rhode Island and you want to swing by the studio, we make it worth your while. We give you cigars, T-shirts, stickers. Anytime someone visits the studio, we, we, hook, them, we hook you up. So. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Definitely come by for the anniversary show, too. We'll be there. Absolutely. October 30th. Yep. So that's uh, – I wanted to spend some time with that because I smoked a lot of the Indian motorcycle cigars. Um, the official review that I'm posting is of the natural. Um, I'll probably post an official review of the, of the uh, Robusto as well. So. Yes, you are. Yeah. Back to you, Will. I went back and I smoked a Neanderthal, um, and this is the the, the standard uh, the Neanderthal size, which is the five and uh, the five and by fifty two fifty eight Figurado. Yeah, it's that. Um, it's a weird size. Yeah, that weird size with the flat cap that yeah. you know you weird, definitely want. I tell you what, weird in a good way though. That size is awesome to smoke. Yeah, um, I tell you what, I smoked the Neanderthal pre-release several months ago, and I was raving about it. Um, that had about ten months of age on it. Tons of flavor and still had all of its power. Now, this one was from the first batch that was shipped in May, and it's about three months old. So this had some age on it, um, and I kind of put it in the humidor. And I'll tell you what, overall, it was pretty much in the same wheelhouse. Um, it was a little, I think I got a little more, I, I called the, the spices were really good. I called it Mexican hot chocolate for, because I wanted to put a buzzword on it, but, um, no, I thought it's a, pre- a pretty accurate description, Will. 
Yeah, it's that spicy chocolate note you get on it. I got a little more of the spice on this than I did with that ten month old sample. Um, so I my my but basically it was the same level of strength. It's still a powerhouse, full but strange, full body cigar. I think the spice is gonna quell a little in those extra months. Um, but this is a great cigar. Um, this is I mean this is a box worthy cigar, definitely heading for Chuck Norris level without a doubt. Um, what I love about this cigar, you could, you could buy these, you could buy a box of them. And I know they come in 50 count boxes. So, you know, again, if you got, I wouldn't hesitate getting 20 of these, um, smoke some now. And you know, if you're going to put some away, you're going to, um, you're going to really, um, enjoy these. Um, because like we said, seven more months of age on it, even better. And that, that's just, I'm going off that based on the pre-release, but this is just my even smoking this one. Again, it smokes great now, but you, it's even going to be a better cigar with some more time on it. So nice. Yeah, I, I tell you, this is. A, I think this is becoming my favorite, one of my favorite Roma crafts right now. Um, speaking of dissident, I smoked a dissident soapbox Lancero. Uh, this is a great cigar. I mean, really nice balance of flavors. It had that little bit of spice with some nice sweet flavors. It smoked great, which is sometimes difficult to do in a Lancero, right? It's one of those more difficult sizes. Um, great smoking experience, awesome flavors. I rated this a box split, Will. I don't know if you have uh, details on the blend. I know this is a cigar that you sent me, but yep. what an awesome cigar. Yeah, it's a, um, it's a Nicaraguan Puro. It's got a Jalapa wrapper. Um, double binder from Esteli, and then it's got the big three from Nicaragua, Jalapa, Esteli, and Condega. So it's a good mix of, of you know, you got those uh, sweet Jalapa notes, the spicy Esteli notes, and the earthy Condega notes all in there. Uh, yeah. So it's a pretty, pretty Great good blend. Cigar. Great blend. Yeah. yeah, the Lancero, I think, is pretty limited, too. I, I like the, the Lancero. might have been my bell of the ball so far from Dissident and with the Soapbox, uh, both those lines. I think this was my favorite from from Dissident so far. Yeah, I I uh I tell you what, I'm not disagreeing with you on that. That is a uh, they are they are really uh, you know like I said, we get a lot of samples and sometimes, but I was curious. I kind of just sent those to you, seeing if you'd smoke them, and I didn't want to put any prejudging on it. But that's pretty much been everyone's reaction is you know hey these are pretty impressive cigars that they've had um um on them. So I think you know I would agree we want to get them at some point on the show. Absolutely. Yep. Back to you, Will. Um, so this is, I'm going to, I put this in the, in the smokes of the week um, more so for, um, but I didn't, I didn't score or rate this cigar, but it's a cigar I did smoke this week. Um, so I think I mentioned it earlier. Hanky Kellner was in um, Charlotte on Monday for the grand opening of the new Tinderbox in Valentine, which they have a Davidoff humidor. Um, and I did smoke, of course, some Davidoff, but um, I did pick up a brand new Avo. Um, literally just hit the shelves. It's called Avo Classic Covers Volume Two. Yeah, um, I think I—I I don't know if I bought Volume One or Volume Two, but I definitely bought one of these cigars that just came into uh, the Humidor, a local shop here in Rhode Island. Do you, do you remember what shape box it was in? It looked like a record. It was like a. Round... That's the volume. You got Volume Two. Okay. That's the it one. It was a yeah. really cool box. I was like, yeah, wow. It's, it's like a record, cool. and it's a dark wrapper on this thing. I mean, it's it it's a Ecuadorian 702 Maroon wrapper, but this thing's dark. It almost looks Maduro-like. Um, this is, I mean, remember when Scott came on, this is one of those improvis, improvisation, 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 improvisation uh, blends where they basically, uh, volume one, they took the Avo Classic blend mm -hmm. and they basically used that as a starting point to build a whole new blend. Mm -hmm. um, with this one, they took the Avo Heritage blend as a starting point and they built a whole new blend on it with the, with the Mexican binder um, in addition to Ecuadorian wrapper and Nicaraguan and Dominican filler. Now, the reason why I didn't review this, and I, I think we talked about this in a debonair ideal, I was at I was at this event and uh, I picked these up and normally I take I don't when I when I get these I get a couple of cigars I take them back and I, I'm pretty methodical when I go through stuff for cigar coop so I'm not gonna be smoking this at an event and and, and reviewing it I just mm. you, you can't do it however uh, my buddy Doug who I happen to really respect his talent he's like he's smoking he's like Will you gotta light this thing up I said well I'm gonna he says 
light one up. He goes, and if you because you're gonna buy another one of these anyway yeah. for the review. So I lit this thing up. And what I'll say is it does not smoke like your traditional avo. So that I don't know if that's gonna be a good or bad thing. This was a rich and robust avo. Smooth. It's not going to have those herbal grassy notes, but it's going to have more of the rich, robust, the chocolate, the creamy more notes. Um, it's probably, um, like I said, it's not classic avo. I think it's just very different, but it's very good. Um, so, I w- like I said, it's a $16 cigar. I gave it no rating, but based on my initial thing, I mean, this thing, I can tell you it's going to score. I mean, this, this is the avo release the one that's really hit me this year. It's made the best first impression of any really? op- uh, this year. But it's not a classic. I mean, it's, it's more than that. Her- the Heritage was a richer, robust cigar to begin with, but it's better. Um, the Heritage had a... Uh... Oh, the Heritage was not that grassy profile. No, and that's what I'm saying. This yes. one's not The Domain be- was the very grassy profile. The Domain's, yeah, it's The grassy. Heritage was your more traditional, almost like Maduro-type flavor cigar. And that's what yeah. you're going to get with this. Um but they 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 really must be using some good tobacco in this thing. So I I didn't give it a rating. What did you, what did you pay for that cigar, Will? Sixteen dollars. Yeah, I paid about sixteen dollars too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean with taxes and everything. Um, mm-hmm. and like I said, I am going to review it and give it the give it a more uh kind of formal treatment of it to really kind of see what it's about. Other than like I said, if you want to say first impression out of the gate, it's it's the album that's impressed me the most this year. Interesting. That's come out. Well, so I have to re- smoke one, and if I really like them, I have to go back to that shop and get some more. Yeah, and like I said, the one thing that I'll keep standing out is it, it, it's the most un like smoke, smoke I've had. Yeah, so well, Heritage is, was a very un like uh, blend. Yeah, it yeah. very much yeah. was, which is why I've kind of been also on Heritage. I'm not saying it's a bad cigar, but because it was so different, it didn't wow me as much as the other Avo. This one... Like I said, and, and for Doug to tell me that you got to light this up now, I kind of really trust this guy. So mm. uh, it was, yeah, so he was he was dead on with it. Interesting. Hanky smiled when I told him about I liked it. He kind of just grinned and smiled nice. at me. Nice. Yeah, it's very good. He goes, yeah. <laughs> so. Um, so I smoked a Romacraft Crow Magnon, the Anthropology, which is a five and three quarter by 46 grand Corona, they call it. Um, awesome smoke. It's, really a per- is. it's a perfect balance of strength and flavor. Like, I found that the, uh, the strength and flavor profiles were just right in this cigar. It smoked great. In you know, my comment on my notes was that it's very easy to smoke it, because it doesn't overpower you. It's got great flavors. It's got great construction, great draw and burn, and all of those things that make for a great smoking experience. Um, it's a great size. I love this Grand Corona size. Uh, I rated it boxworthy. Will I, I? I would smoke a lot more of these. This is could be your like everyday, like smoke a lot of them kind of cigar. It, it's just the perfect cigar f- for that. He, I mean, just an awesome offering from Skip. You know, I'll, I haven't I, I haven't said this. It's probably in the Cro Magnon line for me. The Bell of the Ball. Mm. I really really like the Anthropology in the Cro Magnon brand. Now the, the Aquitains, I would put a, I would put a different story there, you know. Aquitains would, are a little stronger. Aquitains are a little stronger. I and I love the bo- blockhead box press with that one, um, but that's a that anthropology. Um, I know Skip, you know, he loves the knuckle drag, which is very good. But this one, the anthropology is the one. I if I had to reach for one, yeah, in the humidor, saying you're going to smoke a, a chromagnet, I'm going to go for the anthropology. I think that five and three quarter by forty six is a really really great size. Yeah. Back to you, Will. I'm done. Um, so I smoked a Matilde Re- Renacer Lancero. Renacer. Renacer yep. Lancero. Um, definitely of all the Matildes, this is my favorite size in the blend. It was nicely balanced with some nice cedar notes. It was a good smoking Lancero. We, you know, we talked a little bit with Jack Taranio about Lanceros. This was another great smoking Lancero. Um, you know, Lanceros you tend to think of as your... Kind of like, uh, almost like a special occasion, like I'm going to relax and kind of focus on my Lancero, smoke it a little slower. I think there's a different kind of strategy you need to um, uh, partake in when you smoke uh, a Lancero. 
But a lot of these cigars coming out in the Lancero size from all these different manufacturers are very much your average, not average, but your everyday kind of smoking cigar in this Lancero size. And this was definitely it. Again, nicely balanced, nice cedar notes. Uh, good cigar. I would rate it a fiver. I, I'd agree. Yeah, I'd agree. I actually really, in that one, I've smoked it and it's very good. I actually gravitate in that, that's, that blend to the uh, Robusto. Um, that's just been my preference. Mm-hmm. But the oh, Lancero is very. Yeah, I think the Robusto is underrated. I know a lot of people like the Corona, which got the rating in CA. By the way, in two weeks, we have, we are, looks like we have Jose Seas. Nice. Uh, I, I just got to reconfirm that, but I believe uh, we're, we're all set with that. Who, you know, he's coming back to Stogie Geeks, and there's just no bigger name in the industry. Awesome. He's done everything. This guy's done everything. So I'm really looking forward to that. And he's such, a, I've had a chance to meet him a few times in person since our interview. We had not met. And I met him, and he is just a gentleman, and, and his family, they're just the classiest people in the world. So nice. looking forward to that. Yep. I will, um, I'm a little ahead of my review schedule because I had so many cigars to smoke for review, and I missed the show. <clears throat> I actually got a chance to get ahead of my review schedule. So I'll tease for next week. You're going to get my thoughts on the Padron 50th Anniversary Natural. Oh, this I can't wait. This is the one to- that comes in the humidor. Um, I picked this up at Mr. J's on a smoke shop. <coughs> And um, you'll get my thoughts on that. As well as I'm going to revisit the Kubanicon HR. And you might be very uh, interested to hear my thoughts on some of the other sizes that I smoked in the Kubanicon uh, HR. Those also came into uh, Mr. J. Savannah Smoke Shop. So I got a chance to, uh, to get a full line sampler of those. So uh, you're definitely going to want to tune in for that. Uh, oh, yeah. I also smoked the uh, E.P. Carrillo La Historia in a, a new size. And you're definitely going to want to tune in for that one. Oh, as well. absolutely. We yeah, it's very, a know very, about very interesting. I mean, it's not too often you get a size um, that's a box pressed Bellicoso or a box pressed Torpedo. Um, I, you know, there's not too many cigars on the market that have that size. This is one of them. And uh, it's a very, very, it's almost like a short and fat box pressed Torpedo. Uh, so you, you'll get my, my full review on that on the next show. Awesome. We got a lot of cigars to give away, Will. We got a lot. So why don't um why don't we before we do that, um we have a voicemail box set up. Oh. I have the number. So don't okay, worry. Good, okay, good. Okay. <laughs> That's so four year anniversary show coming up October thirtieth, all day we're broadcasting. We want you to basically uh be a part of this. So we're asking you to leave us a voicemail. And the voicemail number is 781-437-7833. Again, 781-437-7833. And I'm going to tease do you something. Know the, do you know the significance of 7833, Well, No. So what's the, the number again? What was it? 7? 781-437-PUFF. P-U-F-F. Oh, yeah. wow. That's Puff. Yeah. Okay. I did that purposely. There you go. So it's uh, <laughs> 781 Puff. That's right. I'm going right. to tease, which normally I don't do teasers, okay? But I'm going to throw a prize in for this for the best one, and I'm going to unveil that prize next week. I already go. know what I'm giving away. And it's a good prize. Yeah. Call us up. And leave us a voicemail message. Leave us a voicemail. I don't think you we've can... had any. I, I would think I, I get a notification. I haven't checked, but. I haven't seen any, and I'm, okay. I'm going to throw a prize in, and I'm going to tell you something. As part of that prize, there will be an Oasis cigar in there, but there's going to be something really cool in there well, from my personal collection. Can so. I change my voice and enter the, the contest? That'd be awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so, so please, yeah, definitely do that. We'll, I mean, we'll, we're going to play the uh, best ones on the air that day, and we have a, a, I mean, we have a blockbuster show in nice. support of cigar rights then, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, let's go to prizes. So we got a lot to give away. Let's start off. Paul, first we have our prize pack 158, which is a a smoke naked T-shirt and a cigar sampler pack. Some what kind is of sample it? pack. It's in the other room now, so I, <laughs> I don't know what it is. So yeah, it's okay. a surprise sample pack. Surprise <laughs> sample pack. Okay. <laughs> All right, and what will what do we want to do for that one? <laughs> um, what year? Did the Tarano family start in the cigar business? Jack That's said a- it in his interview. Yep. What year did the Tarano family start in the cigar business? Send the, uh, send the answer to the show at stogiegeeks.com, 
and we'll send you a Smoke Naked T-shirt in your size and uh, 158 uh, prize pack, which I don't know what it is. It's probably something pretty fabulous. But you're getting you're getting one of our Smoke Naked T-shirts, and you, right. there's always good prizes. They're five. Well, they're usually four or they're five. They're usually four or five packs of our sponsor, uh, usually our sponsor cigars. Yep. So you're gonna get something good there. Okay. Now the next thing is we have three. Roberto Duran, actually Duran cigar uh, sampler packs from courtesy of Jack Tarano. Oh, and email, by the way, email all the answers to the show at stogiegeeks.com. The first one with the one for the prize pack 158 will win that. Okay? okay. Now, these next two prizes, we're waiving the 90 day rule. So, as oh, you know, excellent. Yeah, so because these are, these are um, different. So, I'm, I'm going to waive. I'm going to, I made a call. We'll waive the rule with this one. Um, oh, here we go. We got the 158 prize pack. Okay. The 158 prize pack is uh, a, a line sampler from 1502. Wow. This I is mean, awesome, that's... dude. So check this out. You get a 50. These look like they're all Toro size cigars. Wow. Yeah. These look like they're all Toros. Uh, in the 1502, you get an emerald. You get two uh, black golds and two rubies. Wow. Yeah. That's an awesome. That's, that's an great... awesome five pack. Yeah. These look like they've been aging for a while, too. The cellophane looks a little yellow on these, dude. Oh, nice. Yeah, I bet these they have. Because Enrique's been on. The, we got to get him back on. It's probably been almost a year since dude, we had these him. Are, these are some aged 1502s. You get an emerald, two black golds, and two rubies in the Toro size. Can't go wrong with that. Yes. Prize pack 158. Yep. <clears throat> so answer that question uh, from the Jack Taranio interview, and you can win that. Okay. Now, the next one, we have three of these, so there's plenty of chances to win. Um, and this one is for um, the three, three – we're giving away three separate uh, Duran Cigar sampler packs. And this one we were going to do – you had the question for this one, right? The yeah, answer. so we'll do one question and we'll pick three winners. How's yep. that? Yep. I yep. want to hear from our listeners. What is your favorite? You got to pick one now. You got to pick one. Right. Send us your favorite Lancero sized cigar. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. We'll pick to three winners from this pool. So three people are gonna have a chance to win this. Your favorite Lancero sized cigar. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what your favorite Lancero sized cigar is. I'm going to go through this list, and Will is too. And I'm probably going to try ones that I haven't tried before. Uh, and I'll probably read your name on the show and say, hey, you know, listener so-and-so recommended this Lancero, and I tried it, and either I liked it or I didn't. So it's kind of a little bit self-serving. But I want to hear from our listeners. What's your favorite Lancero size cigar? Awesome. That's great. That's great. So I love the grand giving stuff away. Yeah, yeah. So here's a grand prize, and I'm donating this one tonight. Um, I actually sent you – I actually got one of these at the Davidoff dinner at IPCPR, and I sent it to Paul. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I got, I bought some at the, at the Hanky Kellner event, I bought some Davidoffs and I happened to get another one of these. And I said, well, I, I just want to share it with the listeners, uh, who've been incredibly supportive of us. Um, and the fact that my wife basically doesn't want any more stuff around the house, but no, that's serious. I, oh, I do. Yeah, okay. I know where you're going no, with this one. Because yeah. I, because I could have, I could have pulled out, uh, this is, okay. This is what it is. It's a Davidoff Escurio cocktail shaker set. And can you see it? I'm holding it up to the camera. Were there cigars in the set that you sent me? Yeah, but I pulled. You didn't get them all. Yeah, you took the cigar. <laughs> I sent you I one. Got, I got one of those, but there was missing the cigars. <laughs> What's going on? I sent you the cocktail shaker. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think you sent me separately all of those sizes. I think I put them. No, yeah, I think. Uh, no, I think I may have sent. I may have kept one size that I, I think the short one. You sent me was, a couple of sizes. I may have bought another couple of sizes to to round it out, but I didn't get the cigars that were in that set. No, there was I, I humidified them actually. Okay, so you sent me all the cigars and I sent separately. Yeah, which which when you get this, these cigars will be in a Bovita bag. So okay. we'll make sure to humidify. But, but I put yeah, them in here. You get a cocktail shaker. Um, you get a muddler. Yeah. <clears throat> now the muddler that's in that is one that I bought on Amazon. Uh, and it's an awesome cocktail muddler. Um, it's stainless steel handle with a, a plastic end on it, and the end kind of has like these little ridges on it. It works great for muddling. That's that's all I'm going to say. And you get uh, a jigger. Uh, you get it's a one ounce on one side and a two ounce on the other side. We use that here in studio when we make cocktails. And what's that right. to the left of the 
it's I'm not gonna open it, but it is actually I can't. It's the uh, recipe for the Escurio mojito. Oh, okay. I didn't get that. I thought it was in there. Maybe I don't know what happened to it. Anyway. Yeah, I, I'll get. I'll I'll make sure I can get that to you. That's out there. And you get, like I said, you get the three sizes of the Escurio. Nice. Uh, I mean, this is this is a easily a hundred dollar value. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, um, that muddler was actually pretty. That was like like a twelve or fifteen dollar just for the muddler, just for that yeah. piece of stainless steel. Yeah. What's and, the and What's the recipe on the mojito? Um. Okay, I'll read it off. I want I want to hear what this recipe is. I got to hear what this All recipe right. is. You know, it was funny because I didn't know um, when I didn't know what this paper was originally until someone told me. <laughs> it, okay, the Escurio cocktail, one and a half parts chacaca, chachaca, chachaca rum. Oh okay. boy, am I so rum? Yeah, it's a rum. One it's part, part rum. simple syrup. Yep. One and a half parts mango juice. Mango juice. Okay. Yeah. One part lime juice. And a quarter slice of a red chili pepper. I have had this. Uh, no Dabo. mint. There was no mint in here. There was no mint in this. Oh, I've had this. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Now I remember. I had. It's really chili good. Chili pepper. So you must muddle the chili pepper. Quarter. Uh, yeah. I guess you do that. It says all ingredients poured into a mixing glass, shaken and poured over ice. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Mango juice, huh? Mango juice. Yeah, it's good. Nice, but but I remember as soon as I saw the chili pepper, I'm saying, "Yep, I had this at the uh, at the dinner." Now you can make a regular mojito, and they got the muddler in there for that as well. Um, yeah, you want to take some fresh mint and you want to muddle that. I like to put a little bit of simple syrup uh, in with the mint uh, as I muddle it. It prevents the mint from getting bitter. You don't want to over muddle the mint because it'll get bitter, especially with that muddler. It just it's, it's a serious muddler. Yeah, um, and uh, I just use. Uh, Actually, I like Old Monk Rum works pretty well, or Mount Gay Black Rum works really well. And I like a darker rum in my mojitos. With uh, and when they say lime juice, use fresh squeezed limes. Don't, yeah, don't, don't cheat buy, yourself. Don't fresh, buy the uh, what's that brand? Yeah, you don't buy the yeah it's fresh no, squeezed lime. Use the fresh squeezed lime, <laughs> and I put a little bit of uh, seltzer water at the top off my mojito. That's how I make them. I made those for my family this summer with the fresh mint from my garden. And they were, everyone was happy and drunk. So, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, definitely. Great, awesome. great uh, cocktail to have with a cigar, by the way. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And, and especially, I'll say this that drink does pair with the Escurio very well because it's got some <laughs> of the spicy notes in there. <coughs> well, I think, <coughs> excuse me, well, let's drink some water. Um, the mango juice and the chili pepper, I think, is a great combination because you get a little bit of spice, but a little bit and a lot of sweet. So, I like that. I'm gonna have to yep. try that. Yep. So here's the deal, guys. Um, this is a live contest only. Um, I will. Ooh. I will keep the contest open till midnight. Ooh. It's it closes if there's no winner. This goes back into the prize pool, and we redo it. Wow. Um. Yeah. So, so I want. What do they have to do? Three qu- I, I picked three questions, uh, one from each segment tonight. Wow. Okay, and so I'm they gonna, have to I'm, answer for this set in the uh, cigars, the bar set in the cigars. Three they got to send email to the show at soyeast.com with the correct answers to the three questions, which Will's going to tell us right now, and it's only live listeners. Only live listeners. And it closes I'm, at 12. If no one answers, we try again next week. And I'm reading it once. <laughs> so okay. that's it. Pay so, attention. Everyone pay attention. in the live chat, pay attention. Yeah. Pay yeah. attention. All right. All right. Question one, and it was one from each segment. What is the name of the cigar brand owner that thought Duran Cigars was named after the boxer? Okay. I got that one. Okay. okay. The second one is an easy one. Name one of the best names over the past 12 months that either Paul and I thought stood out as a cigar name. Okay, that's an easy one. We we talked about a lot. Yep. The third one, what did I refer to the Saga Blend Number 7 Perfecto as? What type of cigar did I call it? Ooh, that's a tough one. Yep. That's a tough one. So... You mail those. That's that's it. I'm not reading them back. <laughs> nice. So I love it. If you don't get it, um, I will put this back into the prize vault, and we will try it again next week or in another show. Um, but this is again thanks to the. I mean, again, th- I can't tell. You, I know we some folks couldn't get in the chat room tonight, and um, we're gonna work on that. 
we really appreciate the support here um, on Stogie Geeks, and and this is something you know um, to do. So there's there's a lot of pride, a lot of cigars tonight. People should not walk home empty-handed. Nice. Yep. Well, thanks everyone for watching the Stogie Geek Show. That concludes our show for this evening. We'll see everyone on the next episode next week.